In this video, you're going to learn how to host your Discord.js bot and keep it online 24-7 using Cybrency Hosting, who are kindly sponsoring this video. Just like last time, you can get one month for completely free on bot hosting services from their platform using the code under control. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to focus more on the GitHub integration part as I did not cover this last time. If you're not comfortable with GitHub and you just want to drag and drop files to the hosting service, that is also an option. So anyway, let's get started. So first things first, obviously make sure that you have a Discord bot ready. I'm going to be using this code base, which is pretty simple and just has a basic log for when the bot comes online. And it also has a very basic ping command. Now let's make sure that our local Git is properly configured. If you already have Git installed and you know how to push your code to GitHub, then you can skip this part. Anyway, we first need to install Git. If you don't already have Git, you can head over to gitscm.com and over here you can go to the downloads page. And if you're on Windows, you can download the Windows standalone installer. So this is going to be 64 bit for me. And if you're on Mac or Linux, it's pretty easy because you just have to run a terminal command. Now, when you're installing Git, just click next a bunch of times. You don't even have to worry about any of the options unless obviously you know what you're doing and just click on install. Once you install it, let's actually test that Git was properly installed. You can do that by opening up your terminal or if you are on Windows, you can even use command prompt. In your terminal, you can go ahead and type git version like so, and you can see that git was properly installed and I have the git version showing up. But if you do get an error that looks something like this, it basically means that git was not added to your Windows path. You can add it to your Windows path by doing the following steps. Now let's go ahead and push our code to GitHub. So in our local code base, we need to go ahead and first configure what stuff we actually want to push to GitHub. You may think we need everything here, but we don't actually need the node modules folder because it's very large. And we also don't need the .env file because this has private information. So we need to tell Git to ignore these directories by creating a special file called .git ignore. I already have one over here and it has node modules and .env. So by listing these directories, Git is essentially going to ignore these files and it's not going to track it at all. Now, if you're on Mac, I would highly recommend also adding .ds underscore store. And this file is actually a Mac specific file, but sometimes it does get pushed to GitHub or it starts getting tracked by Git which is kind of annoying because it's not really required. So that's all we need here. Now let's go ahead and initialize a local Git repository. You can do that by opening up your terminal and typing git init and hit enter. This should change up a few things visually. You can see that we have the letter U next to our files. And this basically means that this file is untracked by Git. We can also type git status. And this will show that all of these files are untracked. Now let's go ahead and add these files to what's called the staging area by typing git add dot. And the dot over here basically adds all the files except the ones listed in dot git ignore. So let's hit enter. And you may get some warning if you're on Windows, but I think it's safe to ignore these. I will have a GitHub discussion linked down below so you can decide exactly what you wanna do with this warning. But for this tutorial, it's perfectly fine. You can ignore this. Anyway, now if we do git status, you can see all of these files are actually in the staging area. Now we can go ahead and make a new commit, which if you're new to Git or GitHub is basically like a checkpoint in your code base. Every time you make a commit at a certain point in your code base, there is a checkpoint created, which is mainly used to track file changes, but you can also do things such as revert changes in your code. To make our first commit, we can type git commit and use the M flag and type in our message here, which I'm going to say initial commit. Now I'm writing initial commit as my message, which basically means that this is the first ever commit that I'm making for this code base. But realistically, you can put whatever message you think is useful for the changes that you've made. Since we haven't made any changes and this is our first time making a commit, it makes sense to put the message as initial commit. Anyway, when we hit enter, the commits are made and we are ready to push this code to our GitHub. Now the thing here is our local Git doesn't actually know where to push this code. So let's go over to GitHub. Over on GitHub, we can create a new repository by clicking new over here, or you can go to your profile and also create a new repository like that. Anyway, I'm gonna click on new. And over here, I'm gonna create a repository with the name of bot hosting. And I'm gonna make this repository private because I don't want anybody else to be able to see this. 
So let's go ahead and create the repository. And at this point, you're going to be redirected to this page and it has a bunch of commands. But to be honest, the one that we are interested in is this one right here, which is git remote add origin and our URL. So we can copy this command and go back to VS code and we can paste it over here. And when we hit enter, we're basically telling our local Git that this is the URL it should use as our remote repository. So whenever we push the code, it's going to use this remote repository right here. So now we can finally push our code to GitHub by running git push, use the U flag, set the origin to main. Now this basically sets the default branch to be main. And anytime you push your code after this time, you don't have to include this part right here. So let's go ahead and run this command. And you can see the code was actually pushed to GitHub. If this is your first time running this command, you will probably get a pop-up if you're on Windows to log in with your GitHub account. And if you're on Mac, you'll probably be asked to hit enter and sign in through the browser first. I'm already signed in, which is why it didn't actually ask me that. And it just pushed the code to GitHub. So now if we go to our browser and if we refresh this page, you can see that our files were actually pushed. And you can see that we have only one commit and that commit is called initial commit. Now, anytime you make changes in your local repository, you can obviously commit your changes and push it to GitHub. Now, at this point, we are finally ready to deploy our code to Cybrency. So head over to the link down below, or you can go to cybrency.com slash under control. And from here, we can go to Discord bot hosting at the top. Now, if we go down, you can see that Cybrency supports multiple languages. So if you work with any of these languages right here, you can deploy your code through Cybrency. Anyway, if you want to get the free month that I mentioned at the start of the video, it's important that you choose the monthly option over here. I'm going to go with the ultimate plan, which is $5 a month. So let's go ahead and click start now. Once again, make sure that your billing cycle is set to monthly to get the free month. And down here, we can set our server location. And since last time, they've actually added a lot of servers in different countries. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Europe Central. Down in the Discord bot type, go ahead and choose your bot type. Since we're using Node.js, I'm going to click on JavaScript. I scroll down, accept the terms of service, and let's go ahead and continue. At this point, I don't really need any of these services, so I'm going to click on continue. Now, at this point, we can go ahead and add our code under this promotion section. So I'm going to type under control and validate my code. So you can see my promotion code was accepted and my total is down to zero. And this is for the first month. So at this point, we can go ahead and create our account. So I'm going to do that real quick. Now, right below the account information, I'm going to go ahead and select PayPal as my payment method, but obviously you can choose whatever you want it to be and go ahead and click on checkout. Now, once it is done, you will get a confirmation message and you can head over to your email inbox to confirm that your bot panel is ready. So in our email inbox, we'll have quite a few emails, but the one that we're interested in is firstly the email address verification. So click on this and go ahead and verify your email address. Once your email is verified, let's go back to our inbox. And now let's go ahead and find the account created email. So click on this and click on set up your account. Now at this point, it's going to ask you to put a password. And this password is actually different from your Cybrency account. This one is related to your panel. So it's up to you if you want to use the same password or use a different password. Once you put your password, go ahead and click on reset password. Now it should automatically log into your panel and you should be able to see all your servers over here. We only have one server and it is offline at the moment. So let's go ahead and manage it. Now in your server management, first go to your files and over here you may have some default files, but go ahead and delete all of these files. And this is important, even if you're using Git. And at this point, if you're not comfortable with Git and GitHub, you can just go ahead and upload your files directly. But obviously we're using GitHub. So let's go to the startup section over here. And at this point, we can go ahead and configure all our GitHub settings. Now, depending on if your GitHub repo is private or public, you can leave some of these fields blank. So let's get started with our Git repo address. So in our case, this is our URL. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste it over here. Next, the install branch is actually going to be main. And the reason for that is if we go back to our GitHub repo, you can see that this is our only branch. Obviously, if you have a different branch that you want to use, go ahead and put the name over here. We're going to leave user uploaded files to disabled, but we are going to enable auto update because every time we start our server, this will pull the latest files from GitHub. 
Next, our bot.js file. This is important because this is going to be the entry point of our bot. And if we go to our code base, you can see that we have the index.js file, but this is inside the source folder. So it is important that we put source over here like this. So it is source slash index.js. Now over here, the git username and git access token is only required if your GitHub repo is private. So in our case, it is private. So we're gonna go ahead and put our git username. In this case, this is our GitHub username. So in my case, it is not under control. Next, we need the git access token. Now this is not your GitHub password or anything like that. It is actually a token that you have to generate in your GitHub account to give this panel access to your GitHub repo. So over here, we have a URL that we can use, this GitHub URL. Obviously, if you're using something like GitLab, then you can use this other URL as well. So once we go to this URL, we can click on generate new token and generate this new classic token. I'm gonna go ahead and use my passkey and we can give this token a name. So I'm gonna say Cyprency hosting like so. Now you can set the expiration to whatever you want it to be, but remember if this expires, your bot deployment will fail the next time you restart the server until you update the token again. So in that case, you can give it a longer expiration. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to no expiration and the scopes that we need is just one, which is repo, and we can go ahead and generate the token. So we should get our token. So let's go ahead and copy this, go back to our panel. And over here, we can go ahead and paste our get access token. So with all of this done, we need to go ahead and reinstall the server so that it can pull all the files from GitHub. So the way you can do that is you can go to settings, scroll down and click on reinstall server. Click on yes, reinstall server. And this should take like a minute. So just wait for this. Okay, so once our server is reinstalled, we need to go back to our files and we need to create a new file. Obviously make sure that all of your files have been pulled from GitHub. Anyway, let's create a new file and this is going to be for our environment variables. So this is going to be like the .env file over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my token to my bots token. And obviously if you have any other environment variables, go ahead and add them over here. Now let's go ahead and create the file and we're gonna give our file name and we're gonna set it as .env. Go ahead and create the file and now we're ready to start our server. So go to the console and click on start. Okay, so our bot has been deployed. As you can see, it says under control development is online. And if we go back to Discord, you can see that our bot is online. So I'm gonna go ahead and test that ping command and it does respond. So this is how you can host your Discord bot to be online 24 seven. If you need any help, be sure to join my Discord Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.